Hello, so today I'm gonna, you know, show you how to do something like this. Um, I didn't know where to put it in terms of like category, so I just put it under lens because I'd imagine it might be, um, you know, just might be very simple supportive texture. So imagine you have your um, desired impact or lens um, texture and this is just to add um, those additional details or just a main flash, something large um, to be there on the screen okay so we're gonna start with the basic shape and i'm gonna use some nodes just to you know randomize it add the blur to it and um, like a directional blur using the slope uh, blur node and we're gonna add some additional details when it comes to like you know this um, blurry things on the sides and on the other side as well just to add a bit more glow to the texture and I'm just using the uh, gradient node to colorize it in Substance Design. Okay, so um, yeah, let's dive into it. Okay, so let's start. I need a triangle shape, so I'm gonna go for the polygon node. I'm gonna take size to, sides to three and change its rotation to be pointing upwards. Okay, and next one I'm gonna use Trapezoid Transform Grayscale. And this cool node actually allows me to, you know, tweak the triangle shape to something like this. Although I don't need the middle one, so I'm gonna disable tiling on that node. Cool. Now let's use circular splatter. Well, splatter circular node. And use it as an image output. I'm gonna reduce the, uh, reduce the pattern amount to 5, uh, increase its scale, and then size as well, and then I'm gonna just randomize it. Okay, something like this. Mm, now I want to do, I want to run it through slope blur grayscale. And so I'm gonna get shape as well. And I'm gonna get this blurry circle here. I'm gonna increase the sample and then intensity to something like this. And as you can see, we actually got missing data here, mainly because the shape is too big. So I'm gonna apply transform just before we're gonna plug it to slope. And then transform, we're gonna press and hold shift and alt and drag that shape down to something like this. And I'm gonna disable tiling as well on that node. And now if you look at your uh, slope blur grayscale, we actually got a bit more space um, and it allows us to get this uh, nice shape. There is one thing that I don't like, which is here. It seems like uh, we still, you know, missing some data. So what I like to do, I want to run this through blur, just to blur that shape a little bit more. And as you can see, we don't have this uh, cat shape here anymore. Okay, so now I'm just going to use radial, radial Blur. I'm going to keep it maybe something like 0.03. I'm going to duplicate it and add a minus to this one. I'm going to try to blend those two together and see what we'll get. Okay, so we've got some sort of rays, but let's maybe see What's gonna happen if we just use different uh, blending nodes, uh, blending modes? So those spikes are cool as well, but you know, let's keep going. Maybe let's use this and then copy paste and use as a max. See if we can blend it together and what kind of stuff we could get. Uh, 
what if we will go through histogram scan just before and change this blending node to add cool so we get those nice spiky shapes and now we we have a slider basically to uh, manipulate how much we actually want of those uh, there okay let's run it through gradient node now and see how it might look once we apply the color so I'm gonna delete this as you know I'm just gonna start uh, with the normal gradient um, I want to have white here as a hotspot and then here we could just add um, a little bit different color so I'm just gonna keep uh, this green and in here maybe I would go for the kind of blueish or teal color Okay, cool. I think those hot spots are actually too bright. So um, the way we could reduce it, we could uh, run this through um, levels and take that slider maybe and turn it down a bit, but not too much because otherwise we're just going to destroy our uh, spiky shapes. So maybe something like this might work. just gonna drag it down a little bit more okay so that's the one way how we could get the those shapes and the other way would be we could duplicate this blend node here add this to be a um, linear dodge so basically we are just gonna add them together and we're gonna run it through levels so we can have a full control over how intense it is so maybe something like here and then we can blend it with our original node which is this one and set it to add and now we have a slider to manipulate uh, those spikes as well so let's run through auto levels as well just in case and as you can see, we got a little bit different results. I actually think this one looks a lot better. So maybe try this approach or maybe experiment with this. It does, you know, whatever gives you the uh, results that you want. Yeah, so I quite like this one. Um, right, so I hope you will find that useful. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching.